Hi, I'm Bob. Let's continue our solution to Chapter Thirteen, pooling clause sections of clause time and simple panel data methods. Let's do computer exercise nine. In part one, we add the log of each wage variable in the data set, and estimate the model by first differencing. How does including these variables affect the coefficients on the criminal justice variables in example thirteen point nine? We generate the nine first differenced log wage variables. And then add them to the model, including the first differenced variables. Does not change the coefficients on the criminal justice variables much. From the table, we see that the coefficients only change slightly after adding the variables. It does not affect the significance either. In part two. Do the wage variables in part one all have the expected side? Are they jointly significant? Explain. Higher wages are expected to lower crime rates, but some wage variables have positive sides. The wage variables are individually insignificant at the ten percent level against a two-sided alternative. Except for the wage of transportation, the F statistic of the joint significance is one point two five, and its p-value is zero point two six. The wage variables are not jointly significant at the ten percent level. It suggests that we should drop them from the model. Let's do computer exercise ten. We use data to determine the effect of job training grant on hours of job training per employee. The basic model for the three years is as follows. In part one, we estimate the equation using the first differencing. The equation is as follows. In part two, we will interpret the coefficient on grant, and comment on its significance. Receiving the grant in the current year is estimated to increase thirty-two point six hours of training per worker. The effect is statistically significant because the p-value is zero to three decimal places. In part three, is it surprising that the first leg of the grant is insignificant? Explain. It is not surprising because last year's grant was for last year's training, and had little to do with the training in the current year. In part four, do larger firms train their employees more or less on average? How big are the differences in training? The estimate for the coefficient on the log employment is zero point seven four four. It implies that if a firm has ten percent more employees, it trains its workers about zero point zero seven 
hours more. The fat is practically tiny and statistically insignificant. Let's do computer exercise 11. In part 1, we consider the static unobserved effects model and argue that beta 1 over 10 is the percentage point change in mass 4 when view per student spending increases by roughly 10%. The outcome variable is the percentage of the students receiving a passing score on the mass test. The explanatory variable is in the logarithmic form, so beta 1 is the percentage point change in mass 4 when real per student spending increases by 100%. Equivalently, beta 1 over 10 is the percentage point change in mass 4 for a 10% increase in spending. In part 2, we use the first differencing to estimate model in part 1. The simplest approach is to allow an intercept in the first difference equation and include dummy variables for the years 1994 through 1998. Interpret the coefficient on the spending variable. Here is the estimation result in stata. The coefficient on the spending variable is minus 3.45, implying that the mass test passing rate decreases by 0 0.345 percentage points if spending increases by 10%. It's not expected, but the effect is not statistically significant at the 10% level. In part 3, we add one leg of the spending variable to the model and we estimate using first differencing. Note that we lose another year of data, so we are only using changes starting in 1994. In the first differenced equation with an intercept, we will include their dummy variables from 1995 to 1998. Discuss the coefficients and significance on the current and lag spending variables. Here is the estimation result in stata. The current spending variable is still with the wrong side and insignificant. The coefficient on the lagged spending variable is 11.04, which is statistically significant at the 1% level with a t-statistic of 3.96. It suggests that next year's mass passing rate will increase by 1.1 percentage points if the spending this year increases by 10%. After controlling for the student population, poverty, the district fixed effects, and the year fixed effects. It makes sense because the spending helps students prepare for the test. In part 4, we obtain heteroscedasticity robust standard errors for the first difference regression in part 3. How do these standard errors compare with those from part 3 for the spending variables? We use the variance-covariance matrix option to specify the heteroscedasticity robust standard errors. The standard error for the lagged spending variable becomes larger, 4.38, and the T statistic becomes smaller, 2.52. The lagged spending effect is statistically significant at the 5% level. In part 5, we obtain standard errors robust to both scedasticity and serial correlation. What does this do to the significance of the lag spending variable? We use the variance-covariance matrix option to specify the cluster in district 
standard errors. The standard error is 5.13 and the T statistic is 2.15. The effect is statistically significant at the 5% level. In part 6, we will verify that the different errors have negative serial correlation by carrying out a test of AR1 serial correlation. We regress the differenced error on its leg and get a slow coefficient of minus 0 0.46, which is strong evidence of serial correlation. In part 7, based on a fully robust drawn test, does it appear necessary to include the enrollment and lunch variables in the model? After estimating the first differenced model with the cluster standard errors, we use the test command to do an F-test for the drawn significance of the enrollment and lunch variables. The F-statistic is 0 0.93 and its p-value is 0 0.4. The two variables are not jointly significant, and we can drop them from the model. But including them in the model as control variables helps reduce the error variance and defend suspects of omitted variable bias. Let's go to computer exercise 12. In part 1, we use the years 1990 and 1993 to estimate the equation by put ORS and report the results in the usual form. Do not worry that the usual ORS standard errors are inappropriate because of the presence of unobserved state-specific factor AI. Do you estimate a deterrent effect of capital punishment? The estimated equation is as follows. We could not find a deterrent effect of capital punishment because the coefficient on execution is positive. In part 2, we compute the first difference estimates. Now, what do you conclude about a deterrent effect? The first difference regression gives an estimate of minus 0 0.104, meaning that one more execution during the past three years is estimated to reduce one murder per one million people holding employment and other state constant factors fixed. The effect is statistically different from zero at the 5% level. Keep in mind that the first difference regression has controlled for the state fixed effects. In part 3, we do the BP test for heteroscedasticity of the error term in part 2. We use the predict command to obtain the residuals and then generate the squared residuals. To do the BP test, we regress the squared residuals on the two explanatory variables in part 2. The F statistic for the joint significance is 0 0.60 and its p-value is 0 0.55. To do the special case of the wide test, we regress the squared residuals on the fit value and the squared fit values from part 2. The F statistic for the joint significance is 0 0.58 and its p value is 0 0.56. We fail to reject the null hypothesis of homoscedasticity in both tests. There is no heteroscedasticity in the first difference equation. In part 4, we run the same regression from part 2 but obtain the heteroscedasticity robust T statistics. What happens? The heteroscedasticity robust standard error for the 
execution variable is smaller than the usual standard error, resulting in a more significant deterrent effect of capital punishment on the murder rate. For the last part, the usual standard error is more reliable than the robust one in a small sample when there is no evidence of heteroscedasticity. Thank you so much for doing the computer exercises with me. See you soon. Thank you for watching this video and subscribing to my YouTube channel. See you next time.